Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever in the world you might be. I am Nicole BC, and you, you and us have everything. everything. Hello. Hello there. This episode was inspired by a stressed out human being just like you. And I was going to say business owner, but I mean, that is actually by the by. Well, no. Okay. I'm lying. I get to talk to a lot of people. I actually get to work with people over a very long period of time these days, which is really exciting. And so I get to see lots of changes. And this episode was inspired by one of my favorite sayings, balance is a verb. As in, you are never going to achieve a state of balance. It is not a static way of being. It is an ever-evolving, dynamic, proactive way of engaging in your environment and kind of continually checking in and being like, does this feel good now? Here's the thing about boundaries, my friend. They are exactly the same. So if you have been here for a minute, you might have listened to Building Better Boundaries for People Pleasers. I also created a workbook for that. That will be in the show notes. If you enjoyed that episode, you should tell everybody you know about it. (laughs) Yes. I think boundaries are one of my superpowers, kind of like most of my best on spectrum qualities. As in, I have no brain to mouth filter. So it never occurred to me that by saying, no, I think that's dumb, or I think you're being an asshole, that what I was doing was building a boundary. (laughs) And when you got upset about it, I didn't notice it because your problems or feelings are not mine. (laughs) And not that I'm not empathic, but It's more uh, like a respect and reverence for the experience you're having and simply allowing you to have it. I don't know. I also worked in pretty creative 24-7 global industries for a really long time where people thought they had access to you 24-7 immediately. And I did that for a really, really long time. I was actually great at that. And it wasn't even necessarily about hitting burnout. I just like got out of that industry and was like, cool. I don't need to be glued to my phone. I'm not a doctor. No one's going to die, right? But I I still managed to pull these threads of understanding what works for me and what doesn't. And, And the thing about being your own boss is you don't have to do anything that doesn't work for you. And if you are, you should fire that boss because they are uh, unreasonable. So let's talk about building better boundaries because it's not just as simply about establishing a boundary, recognizing I call it my invisible line. I can never see it. I never know when I'm going to cross a boundary. I do it all the time, but I can absolutely feel it. I feel it in me first, and then I, I will recognize in others when I am crossing a boundary. But that people-pleasing thing is, is pretty insane, right? And so you kind of try and step back, and people feel that pull, and then they want to push, and it's like this whole dance that we're doing. So recognizing what a boundary feels like to you is your first step. I think of everything as like frequencies, right? It's a frequency of experience and of feeling. I can get really familiar with that. So then when I, when I tune into that particular frequency, I recognize it. Now, obviously, if you're establishing a new boundary, that might not be immediately available or obvious, but it's the way you feel after you've crossed that invisible line, that like overextension, um, martyrdom, noble. For me, it shows up noble. Like, oh, I'm so amazing for doing this thing. And it's like, no, you're not. No one gives a shit. Or if they are pretending they are, that's not real. And you're doing this not for you. That's how Noble shows up. Even if it is a beautiful and supportive cause that I am participating in, if I don't feel good about it, what's the fucking point, right? So we recognize we've we've created this gap, this chasm it, like of need. And again, feel into what that feels like for you. The way I describe boundary crossing or experience boundary crossing is going to be just that, the way that I do. I'm trying to bring attention to these experiences that show up every day because what I will tell you, it is impossible to be successful as your own boss. I mean, we're all our own bosses, right? Regardless of if we have an employer and a job or not, like you lead yourself first. You will burn yourself out. You will hurt yourself. You will resent yourself. You'll be full of regret and potential need for retribution. (laughs) If you don't start to understand what a boundary 
when a boundary is needed because of how it feels when you don't have any. Boundaries are literally protection. They're safe. You know, it's it's the rules. It's the parameters. It's the expectations. It's how we minimize disappointment and regret and resentment, right? And bitterness and frustration and failures by just simply identifying like this works or this isn't. And then being able to communicate that. Sometimes you don't actually need to say any of it out loud. It's just going to happen all up in here because when you can hold your own boundaries, you good. People will respond to them. And sometimes it's kicking and screaming and yelling and accusatory and like awful. But if you're holding your own boundary, my friend, you don't care. And I know that from experience. This is about boundaries being a verb. So you know how to build a boundary. You've established a few boundaries. And now they're feeling a little constraining. Like, I don't need that supportive, protective layer holding me in here. Actually, like, I want to, like, roam free in the wild. That's cool. That's why boundaries are a verb. Because what you've done, first and foremost, by building a boundary is shown yourself you can keep you safe. That's that level one energy, my friend. When we feel victimized, resentful, apathetic, hard done by, everything is happening to us, we don't feel safe. And no one can make you feel safe and secure but you. That's what boundaries are for. And once you trust yourself, once you recognize, oh, I'm actually in charge of my own security, everything in your life will change. (laughs) Like fucking everything. The way that you relate to others, the things that you enjoy doing and the things you want to engage in, the way you move your body, the way you navigate through your world, like when you feel safe, it's unbelievable. Now, I, my expertise is not in like that part of the equation. I kind of step in once you've established that safety and security. I can help you understand how to build better boundaries from that point. Um, Safe and sound protocol, SSP, uh, Jessa Reed from... Soberish Mormon in the Method has um, been talking a lot about SSP and her Patreon. So that's where I found that. If you feel wildly unsafe, if you feel like you're in a constant state of reactivity, if you are struggling with anxiety, firstly, I don't know who isn't right now, but secondly, check that safe and sound protocol SSP out. There's a ton of free resources out there. Anywho, moving on. So you've got a boundary and it doesn't feel right anymore. That's all the information that you need. A lot of people that I work with need to establish boundaries. They have been overextending themselves. They've been working insane hours. They've been yes people to everybody. They're everybody's hero. They're everybody's problem solver. And in doing that, they have become the, they've actually become the problem. So firstly, we figure that one out, right? And then, and then they need to reestablish these boundaries. They need to actually teach people how to treat them. Like, you can't expect me to do that anymore. I'm not available for this anymore. I don't enjoy doing that. I don't want to do this anymore. A lot of my people are creatives. They want to be doing creative things. They don't want to be running payroll. They don't want to be going through the financial statements and, and, and micromanaging expenses. They're perfectly happy with talking about like the bigger macro investments and financial flows in their business, but they don't want to be involved in the day to day. So we build boundaries to protect them and their time and their energies and to manage others' expectations. I talk a lot about what happens when you establish a boundary. It's wildly uncomfortable for everybody involved, most especially the boundary builder. This is about what happens when you want to move that boundary, right? So prepare. You've already done this once before. You now know how to do this. Again, you've established that sense of safety, recognizing I'm going to, I'm going to experiment with this. I don't feel like I need those same parameters. I don't feel like I need those same rules. I've been doing that a lot recently. All of my rules no longer apply. This is why recognizing boundaries are a verb is really important. Just as a silly example, I used to have a really strict no phone, no screens policy after about 7 p.m. at night. I used to wake up really, really early. And firstly, I've just felt a hell of a lot more productive in the evenings. And like I can actually focus and um, I have just much more capacity. Also, I'm not caretaking my mom anymore. Also, I am now on the East Coast in the United States. So I'm no longer three hours behind other people, <laughs> financial markets, etc., And I have so much more capacity that I'm not taking care of my mom. Like every single day, it's unbelievable to me. And the level of productivity I was programmed to 
participate in is kind of insane. And if I don't check myself, I will measure my success about how much I got done that day. And that's not what it's about at all. And in doing that and giving myself the space and the freedom to play and to be excellent and be adventurous and to have fun and all all my values, I have so much more capacity. I am creative at night. I do want to work at night. I don't feel exhausted and like I can't form sentences anymore. And so I get to move some of those rules around. Maybe I am working on my computer at eight o'clock at night. And you know what that means? I just need to bring some awareness to what's happening the next morning. What's crazy is... I don't want to get too involved in my day-to-day schedule. Let's just say all of my rules aren't working anymore. So I am currently playing with my boundaries and I'm just testing. So I'm preparing my experience and I kind of walked you through that. Like I'm looking at my schedule. I'm looking at some things that might be affected by the fact that I, I changed this boundary. I might need to communicate with people. Hey, this is what I'm, I'm now available. I might need to change my schedule. Let some of my team know. Like these are the kinds of things that happen when we kind of start to move our boundaries. So you've established safety with yourself. You've proven that you are in charge of your own safety and security. The next thing that happens is you become more comfortable communicating. When we first build our boundaries, it's really hard to, to tell people no. Once you become a, bond, a boundary boss, like I might have said no a lot. I might have said no to things I wanted to say yes to <laughs> because my boundaries were so intact shall we say. And so it is about going, okay, well, I, I want to say yes to a few more things now and we'll see. The more you practice maneuvering these boundaries, the more familiar you're going to become with that frequency of like, oh, we're at a, we're at a stop point here. This is, I am, I'm getting close to a boundary. And instead of overextending or overreaching, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna hit pause for a moment. What can happen is it feels like the same problem shows up in our experience again. I'm having the same conversation with this person. I am having the same, I feel the same level of exhaustion and burnout at the end of my days. But I beg to differ, my friend. That is your ego talking. That is pre-boundary you, right? This is the same problem in your safe to play place. And what I think you're going to notice once you actually really start moving these boundaries is that it's not the same problem. And in fact, it might look and smell and taste and sound and act the same, but you are different now. And the way you're going to engage with that challenge is going to have a different frequency. It's going to feel a little bit different. Play with that. See if you can bring just a little bit of space to it. If it's somebody challenging you. This, this whole episode was kind of inspired by someone who I've been working with who felt wildly unsafe as the leader in an organization. And this one is about you, my friend. Every, I get a lot of feedback being like, I think you made this episode for me. And that's exactly why I make these. Every now and again, there is someone out there that I am talking about. So this person started off without any boundaries, feeling incredibly resentful of everything. <laughs> everything. Now they can have the exact same conversation with an employee who is demanding recognition, demanding monetary compensation. And they can just be like, wow, I really appreciate your commitment and ambition. And no, and not even need to have that conversation with them in the moment, recognizing like that's what our scheduled meeting is for. We can do that then on your time. It can be like that. Like you can create that level of change. And so I like to think about when I feel as if the same problem is coming up again, I challenge myself to recognize, sure, might be the same problem, but I am a totally new person and I'm going to bring all the experience and all of the wisdom and all of the strength and security that I have in this moment now to this situation and ask, what what could I do now? Like might be the same problem, but I'm going to respond to this completely differently. So, and, and again, that doesn't necessarily mean you look different, you talk different, you sound different. It could be literally, I feel different. I'm curious rather than distrustful. I am open to ideas and suggestions rather than blame and shame. Those, I mean, those aren't simple shifts. Those are actually massive fucking cataclysmic change. But when you experience the same problem, but from a completely different perspective, you see it like an opportunity. What we also recognize with 
boundaries. And, and once we know that these are, these are a verb, these are movable, these are mutable, these are things that will forever and probably always change along with you. Like we also start to recognize we can't fuck it up. Like you can't, even if you build a really strong boundary and somebody gets incredibly offended and you recognize like, Oh crap, like that might not have actually been in my best interest, let alone our best interest. Then all you do is go like, Oh wow. So that thing that I put in place, I don't like it. I don't think I like it as much as you don't like it. So I'm going to acknowledge that that didn't need to be right there, right then. And are you willing to work with me to try and figure out a different way of doing this? And you might be having that conversation with yourself. But, you know, again, that's like, honestly, and in all of my own, like, quote unquote, rule breaking, I am recognizing that at some point I needed those boundaries. Now I trust myself and I get a lot more freedom and agency. And I have so much more room for activities with that trust and security and feeling of safety. And that might look like I am fucking up. But what if this is the thing that actually is the level up? Like I have freedom now. Okay. Do I need to fill that with productivity and to-do lists? I hope not. I don't think that's what I meant when I said freedom, right? So you move and you build and you fortify and you honor and then you tear it down and you do it all over again for you. You stop doing it for them. They are your boundaries, my friend. And it will allow them to engage with you in a way that everybody gets to be successful, which feels safe and secure for all participants. If people react poorly, it just means they can't come in. Like they don't get to get as close to you and you don't even have to do anything about it. They're the ones wilding out looking like a psycho, right? Or just a Karen out there like, you cut me off and you're just like, I'm listening to the best music, having the best time, going to do the best thing over here. I'm sorry you're so miserable with your talk to the manager haircut, Karen. When you heal old wounds they don't hurt anymore. When you get triggered, you recognize, okay, cool. That's, that is a, I was going to use a gross analogy there. That is a scab with a bandaid on it and it still hurts, <laughs> which means there's more healing to do. That's another thing. When this thing comes back around, if it is wildly upsetting, what you've probably done is excavated to a new layer of healing or this is your boss level. This is when you take that thing down and you don't worry about it anymore. And the, the next step is like trust and faith and inspiration and whatever you want to call that knowing, that gut instinct of like, I got this. Even if, it, even if you don't know what that means, like that's what boundaries give you is that structure to build upon, to finally go, I don't know how, I don't know when, but I know I'm going to be able to do this and do this safely and securely and successfully because I'm safe. There's no rush either. Like you don't need to rush to rebuild or to tear down or to push back or pull in. Like you start to really navigate with this sense of timing because you're doing it in a way that empowers you. And I'm I'm probably said safe and secure like a thousand hundred times, but that's ultimately what boundaries are all about, right? Last thing is your energy is mutable. And what that means is the things that you want to do, the the capacity, the amount of space and time and willingness and force that you have to do those things, who you want to do them with. Like, I don't have to tell you everything is changing all of the time. The only constant is change. But sometimes, especially when we're, we're early on with our boundaries, and this is the thing that I actually, I do get to talk a lot about with my people is they tell me, well, this is how it's going to be forever. I will never get the support that I need. I will have to sacrifice things in order to make my financial constraints work. I can't sell this product. I can no longer offer the service. It's a lot of things we can't have, right? And I like to look at it like right now. And right now, what I am doing is prioritizing my safety and security. If we feel like we are constrained financially, that's a boundary, right? And some people call it a budget or a spending plan or an investment plan. But ultimately all you're saying is I'm going to prioritize my safety and security and not wild out and get into a whole bunch of crazy ass debt or make financial decisions that make me feel like I'm about to lose my pants quite literally. Right now I'm going to focus on this thing that actually feels really good. That's the boundary. So rather than sacrificing, we are choosing. You don't 
have to explain your boundaries to anyone ever. And I find myself doing that all the time. People ask me a question and it's nine times out of 10, a yes or no. And 15 minutes later, I stop answering. (laughs) If you know, you know. So recognize where you're feeling obligated to justify your boundary and just recognize it. That's all. Because like the boundary ninja just moves through their day. If you've called me on the phone, you will, you will have experienced my boundary ninja or emailed me. There's this expectation that you apply to a reply to an email immediately for you or them, not me. And people have all sorts of stories. My family think I am a dropkick homeless person drinking 40s out of a paper bag and a gutter because I don't respond to their emails. I'm not going to get into it, but that's a boundary. Emails are a boundary. And I feel fucking great not letting email be my boss. And I've set up a lot of different ways to make that work for me. If you're curious, you know where to find me. The last thing I want to say, do I, how many, I wonder how many times I say that and while I'm recording these, but for real, what you're doing is reclaiming all external validation. You are living life on your terms, quite literally, and you were doing it for you. You're clear on your definition of success. You know what your capacity is. You invest in what's most important to you and you're not looking for anybody else's approval. That is like, uh, that's like sensei level if we're going with this, the ninja. Um, and it's the thing is, is you can achieve that in some spaces, maybe not in others. You can achieve it at times, definitely not forever. But what boundaries are, and especially what moving a boundary is, is proof of growth. When that same thing comes back around, you are a different person. I don't care how long ago you repeated that particular pattern. It's showing up now to show you how far you've come and how far you've grown and what kind of a boundary you need. So this was a quick one because we get to talk about this a lot. If uh, boundaries are new to you, please check out my People Pleaser's Guide to Building Better Boundaries. You can listen to that episode. There's also a workbook for you. Join the Loop. That is my weekly-ish newsletter where sometimes I rant and rave. And most of the times I just share a few fun things that I've been obsessing over for the last week. I'm recognizing like my obsessions now with this newfound capacity. Um, And one of my boundaries was very much like limiting my rabbit holes that I would go down. Now they are bottomless. (laughs) It's been a pretty cool place to play. So thank you so much for playing with me. I do these for you. If you've got a question, let me know. I would be happy to build a whole episode around it or potentially a loop newsletter around it. But um, yeah, uh, that's all I got. Thanks for being here. 